Um, so who am I, uh, just to get started, who am I speaking with here? I'm Chris. Uh, I've got Sandrine uh, to my left, and uh, we work for the Key Life uh, Charitable Trust um, in New Zealand. And the Charitable Trust's uh, objective is to reduce the stigma of suicide and mental health problems across New Zealand with a particular focus um, with a, a key part of the organisation that we wanted to discuss today uh, on youth services, youth mental health services. So one of the initiatives that uh, the Key to Life uh, runs um, biannually in, in New Zealand is a fundraising day called Gumboot Friday. Mm -hmm. Gumboot Friday, uh, the analogy is um, being depressed and having uh, mental health issues is a bit like being stuck in the mud. Um, so hence the gumboots. Um, and they fundraise uh, to raise enough money to provide as many kids as possible with free mental health um, counselling services across New Zealand, provided by independent counsellors. Um, and uh, the idea behind it is, unfortunately, in New Zealand, we've got, um, as I assume many countries do, uh, wait and those lists for mental health services can be quite long, um, unfortunately. And that means that kids who, uh, you know, requesting the help of public services can be waiting for some months. So we try to um, help bridge that gap from the time that they, they you know, are confident enough to reach out or, or are identified as needing help um, to the point where they are able to get it publicly. Well, that's, uh, that's a very, that's moving very worthy cause. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, I think we have got it now. Oh, yep, yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. Um, I can't see you, but I can uh, I trust that you're still there. Um, okay, so that was a great, um, and let me just double check this. Is recording. Yes, um, I think that was a great introduction. Um, I got the, uh, I brought up a couple of tabs here. This is uh, Balsamic Wireframes, the tool we'll be using to do some wireframing. I just pasted mm -hmm. uh, the small snippet that you included in the email about what you wanted to focus on. That's very, very helpful. Um, this is the web uh, page that you sent me. And then here is um, an online version of the, uh, all the information that you sent me, um, which we can use um, to apply um, here. Um, but uh, since we're kind of just starting from scratch here, do you think you could summarize what you are hoping to accomplish in this session specifically? Yeah, so we, we, we know that uh, there's a particular user of this um, web app that we're needing to redevelop um, who is um, I guess, uh, arguably, the, you know, the kind of the most important given their state. Um, and so we, we wanted to ensure that um, these uh, young people that are coming into the site to find um, a counsellor and connect with that counsellor have the, uh, the best possible experience, user experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of focusing on that. As it stands uh, at the moment, we do have an existing, uh, it's, it is a search function mm -hmm. um, as part of the app to find a counsellor, um, but it, it wasn't necessarily developed specifically for this cause. Mm -hmm. this actually um, another piece of software that was kind of adapted. Mm -hmm. And so some of the thinking that was maybe applied in there mm -hmm. doesn't, mm -hmm. It doesn't apply very well to this particular case. So, so the idea is the kids would come in, or the parents, uh, in some cases, if the younger children might come in, mm -hmm. um, and they would click through into uh, get a counsellor, mm -hmm. and that would bring up some sort of a search prompt or some sort of a flow that allowed them to go through to find a counsellor that met their needs um, uh, for for a particular issue. Um, so uh, one of the things that we're kind of wary of is um, the, the fact that they might already be quite distressed, um, feeling a little overwhelmed, 
kind of continuing to overwhelm them with uh, kind of a clunky user experience. So mm -hmm. we want to the extent that we can kind of solve their problem for them uh, in as um, simpler fashion as possible. Um, so they would they would click through, they would they would see uh, a screen where they can um, look up uh, counselors based on kind of almost like a profiling type um, scenario. You know, they may have a eating disorder or mm -hmm. something that, that's kind of specific. Um, and then they would be able to connect with that counselor um, via the site. And that, that sort of commences the process of, of, of counseling. Um, we want to be careful of things like um, if the in certain scenarios, they, they, they may actually be of risk um, to, mm -hmm. to themselves. Um, this particular flow is not really a solution for that problem. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we're kind of directing people to the right um, support helplines, um, the right care under those, those sort of circumstances. Um, and uh, yeah, we also want to make sure that the, the connection is a real human connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, at the moment, there's, I, I guess, the, 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 the sort of the effort that's been made in that regard is, is pretty simple. It's kind of like a photo, a little profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we would love to explore how to make a more human connection, whether that's with, you know, giving counsellors the opportunity to actually upload video um, to talk about themselves or, or something along those lines. Very smart. That makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, uh, let's see, what are, so you have something currently and you'd like to focus on improving that. Are there some uh, technical limitations or considerations that we should be thinking about? Do you have a plan or ways for building this? Are there any other uh, kind of limitations that we should keep in mind? We're going to completely rebuild it from okay. scratch. So there's the a, a pure greenfield exercise. Mm -hmm. okay, great. So, and this will all be built into this website, is that correct? No, we, we will build it as a uh, React.js application. Mm, um, okay. The part is currently running out of web flow. Mm -hmm. we, we do, you know, expect that it's a, it needs to tie together, right? So the flow needs to go from, from either one from the other or, or, you know, if you go directly into the React app itself, it needs to kind of account for that. But um, we can change this uh, website, the Webflow one. So um, from the user's perspective, they will come to this website and then um, that will then launch the, the app? Yeah, that's, that's the current thinking, yeah. Mm, so okay. technically that would be the appropriate sort of assumption to make. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if we need to, we can kind of like, at the moment, there's a little bit of a click through exercise here, we could make it more direct. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is the, is this the current workflow, the clicking on get free counseling? Yeah. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. Yep. Um, and from there, they jump into the, the existing app. This mm -hmm. is the one that's been adapted from another product. Got it. So this entire app, we can just imagine starting from scratch. Exactly. From this okay. point, completely brand new. Okay, great. Um, I see that you've already included some of these, some of those considerations you mentioned here. If you need an emergency, call this. You know, here's some resources if the yeah, if choosing a counselor is is too much for them at at that point. And this is great. Some nice tips here. Um, this will help make it feel, you know, this is already doing some of the work to make it feeling feel a little bit uh, less overwhelming. Yep. Are you planning on keeping this as is? Yeah, it'll it'll evolve, um, mm -hmm. but we're not going to, we're not planning on rebuilding this part. Got it, got it. Um, okay, uh, great. That's very useful. Are there any other, any other, let's see, any ideas that you have from a design standpoint? that we should think about? Um, 
I mean, not 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 really, not not anything that would uh, constrain any thinking. Um, uh, the one thing that's still a little bit debatable um, is uh, whether we can use a kind of a rating system. Um, mm -hmm. we, just, we just don't know whether we're sort of it's an appropriate vehicle for that. But mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the same time, we kind of want to take the burden away from the, the young people and their parents to figure out who's good and you know who, who might be a good choice. So um, yeah, but that one's still sort of in the air. But I think for the purposes of today, we can imagine it that it is possible. Okay, uh, fantastic. All right, so let's start talking about the UI specifically. Um, I am going to still do this in text for now, just so we can kind of start to think about some of the things that we need. So, um, so there are a couple of different. Let's see. You, uh, I saw that you shared some links already. Um, sometimes it's can be easy just to start with some other examples. Are there um, are there some other sites that do something similar to this that you would like yeah, to they, they, borrow from, or that have inspired you, or think you think do it well? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a big focus um, globally around providing counseling services in a digital mm -hmm. sense. Um, so there's lots of like better help and, and what have you that, that have uh, been around for a little while, I suppose, but are, are starting to get a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we've obviously assumed that they've got uh, deeper pockets and have spent some time thinking about UX and UI and mm -hmm. the due diligence there. So we've looked at those for inspiration, but um, the, the key thing that we, we like is that human connection. So you can sort of see it here in the design. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're talking with a person. That that person is um, that person is uh, you know a real person, not just mm -hmm. a, um, a right. A, a lot of a lot of faces, a lot of visuals. Uh, you know, visuals that are kind of friendly and inviting, and probably even some of the colors are chosen very deliberately. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, the reason I thought of this is because I looked at this and I said, okay, first we're going to need a search uh, bar as the top thing, but, you know, realizing that that might be actually the wrong thing to do because that could be very intimidating and looking at these and, and maybe it's more of a step-by-step a -step kind of guided thing, you know, you're, you're not um, starting out right away searching by somebody's name, you know, maybe that's an option, but, um, you know, maybe you want to narrow it down. Um, by something else, um, something else first. Um, looking at how some of these might do once you start, once you kind of uh, initiate into their into their workflow. So, yeah, you got it. That's exactly right. Yeah. So I've got some options here. These what these start to ask me about some uh, information about myself. Um, probably that might. Okay. So this. Um, I feel like one thing that is maybe missing from a workflow like this is that this is collecting this kind of standard demographic information, like filling out a form. Whereas what I'm really interested in, if I'm a user here is finding the right person for me. I don't want to necessarily jump through the hoops to tell the site all about who I am. I, I'm rather, I'd rather have questions asked to me about what I'm looking for, not uh, you know information about how old I am that uh, may not be so you know, if I'm very eager to find somebody. Um, this is kind of an interesting uh, flow here. Um, it's maybe a little bit over the top as far as what you were talking, uh, saying, because this is, um, uh, you know, it's it's preventing me from getting what I need and just saying that it's a safe space is maybe not as exactly. useful as showing people who, you know, really kind of convey that. Okay, so this is, this is how I don't want to create an account if I'm uh, in you know, urgent need of, of some help. So this is the same thing. It's asking me for age and gender, which as somebody coming to the site with some sense of urgency, I may not, uh, that might be kind of, uh, I could be turned off by that. So let's think about this from purely from the user's point of view. What, what are some things that will help them feel like they are getting closer to their goals? you know, as soon as possible? What are the things that they would want to, you know, that, that both serve the, the interests of, or both help the app determine 
you know, find the right person for them and help the user uh, feel that they are making, that this app is going to be helpful for them. What's some information that they may uh, input or select? Well, they may have a, uh, a particular issue, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, I think that's, uh, we need to obviously do a little bit of testing on, on these ideas to, mm -hmm. to verify it all, but we think that that's probably one of the highest concerns, like what, how they're feeling, like what is the, mm -hmm. the struggle that they're having? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're called, um, I guess that there's sort of a mental health condition, mm -hmm. uh, things like anxiety, depression, eating disorder, um, you know, maybe they're suffering from, uh, being bullied, mm -hmm. um, low self-esteem, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously the language has to be kind of, you know, childproofed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we need to be a little bit careful about the clinical stuff, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, in simple terms, mm -hmm. what they're feeling. Yeah. And so that, uh, yeah, I think that that works because I assume that's also able to kind of narrow down their their results as well, or it's starting to, that can feed information to the application that's going to help them as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. So when the counselors are registered in the system, they will have defined specialties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what other information can the users provide that will help narrow down a list for them? Um, I think whether they want it to be in person or mm -hmm. online. Okay, great. I can see that. Uh, being very useful as well. Okay. And there's almost a bit of a branching thing here because if it is in person, then all of a sudden location becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, in more details like events they're willing to travel or whatever. Yeah, exactly. That would kind of open up things, uh, some other questions. Okay, um, you know, I wonder if we can do kind of like multiple steps or um, kind of phases. One is maybe to get them to their preliminary results and then another one can almost be more of like a filter. So yeah. maybe they do have a preference for the say the gender of the person that they're talking to, but mm -hmm. that might be not as critical as just show me a list of people that can help me with this and let me browse once I've gotten to a manageable number. Yep, exactly. Um, what's, let's see, aside from in-person versus on, online, if there's something else that they might want or need to specify kind of right right off the bat right away um well one thing that we we need to figure out a little bit is availability um so we you know despite the fact that we've kind of got this registry of counselors we don't know from very well from from one week to the next whether they're kind of available mm -hmm. um, so we, we do need to figure that out technically but um we could it, i guess at this stage, we could kind of think about availability as being particular times of the week, maybe, whether it's mornings, afternoons, mm -hmm. um, weekends. Um, mm -hmm. What else have we got? Uh, there, there, there can be cases where they, they might actually have, this could be a refinement option, but, um, you know, filter, but they might actually have a preferred counselor. So they might mm -hmm. just want to get some that counselor. So if they do have a specific name? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's possible that, um, you know, the, the, the parents of, uh, of the child have mm -hmm. funded a session or two and then realized subsequently that actually that we, we can get this free um, through this fund and uh, they want to continue with the same person. Mm -hmm. they, may be, they may be one of our independents, so they might want to look them up. Mm -hmm. um, what else we got? I think that's probably, I think it's probably it. Okay, that sounds like a really good starting point. I think we can maybe dive into some UI design um, areas now. So, you know, I'm thinking that this page should be very 
clean, not very cluttered. It should really be focused, you know, laser focused, kind of in a way like some of these were on, you know, just tell me what you're looking for. Kind of, you know, I want something for myself. I want this, I want that, you know, a lot of like, kind of don't make me think about it. Just let me pick the one that, you know, like, yes, I want that. So um, as far as their condition, um, you know, here's a couple of, we'll go through some um, options here. We could have a drop down list of a bunch of conditions that feels a little bit uh, clinical, a little bit maybe traditional that might not be as, as inviting. The advantage is that if there's a lot of them, it can uh, make it easier for the sake of screen space. Um, um, we could, uh, there's also the option like we've seen on these sites where you have um, multiple kind of big button box kind of things that mm -hmm. make it very easy to um, pick from because it's got a big target. You're allowed, you can use uh, bigger text so that it's very easy to read and skim. Um, but the downside is that if you start to have too many of these, if you have 10 or 12 of these, then it becomes a little bit overwhelming. Visually, um, let's see if there are some other options. There could possibly be a way to um, categorize um, things. And this is just thinking kind of um, uh, it just in general, not necessarily for a specific, uh, this specific UK use case, but from a user interface point of view, how um, you can present lists of things. Um, mm -hmm. There's also just kind of a generic uh, list. Maybe they want to, no, they probably don't want to pick multiple, but if uh, there's a possibility that some of the names are not specific enough, then they might um might want like uh some check boxes what are you concerned about you know maybe you have anxiety and an eating disorder or whatever mm -hmm. um so those are a few ideas for how somebody might uh choose something from a list do you have any thoughts on that so far yeah uh, the checkbox the checkbox option is interesting because um uh, there's there's a a high likelihood that they, they kind of do feel more than one issue. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's normal. Uh, but I kind of like the big buttons. So I'm wondering whether we can do a combination of the two where you can kind of multi-select on big buttons. Um, we, can, yes. we, can, we can group it um, to some extent. So we can take like the, the top uh, issues, mm -hmm. the big issues that are very common, um, might be half a dozen of those, maybe you know, maybe a couple more, and then we can mm -hmm. kind of have another option or something as well that sort of caters to uh, the rest. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, that is a really smart thing to do from a user interface perspective. It's like help them by, you know, if 80% of your users have the, you know, come with the same five issues or something like that, then list those first and you could have kind of a, a more button or disclose, you know, a, a thing that shows more, but uh, that could be a way to balance having big obvious things to click on versus not overwhelming them with things. Yeah. Um, and I think that we could do, um, there's multiple ways of doing check boxes. Um, let's see, these, um, there are these kind of, uh, yeah, you could do kind of a a button with a you know a checkbox in it or something like that, and maybe it changes uh, color based on whether it's selected or not, rather than a specific um, a little you know, or traditional checkbox. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So we could try something um, like that, where um, you know, and we'll just put in some. Uh, placeholder text. Um, that's very good, but something maybe, and maybe that is the most prominent prominent thing. Another thing in UI design is that um, you know there are very ways various ways in the user interface to 
indicate priority or emphasis. So one of those is size. So if you have some, the most important thing should be, you know, the, can be the biggest, or, you know, as well as at the top of the page. So if that's kind of the primary thing, then that should be maybe the, the biggest and the most compelling. And then maybe when we're asking them about in-person versus online, uh, that can be a little bit smaller or some of the other, um, uh, some of the other things that might be less important. Um, and maybe some of those aspects could be a little bit more like a traditional form. Um, uh, let's see, let's do radio button group would not be the best here, but so. in person. Uh, um, this could also be a little bit more prominent. We can get to that later. We're kind of going through every step. We'll get a little closer to what it might look like in in the end. Um, yeah, we could have we should have a search box um, that instead of having it at the top like you do now, um, this this could be lower down. Um, these could be kind of uh, distinct sections. We can worry about the layout alignment later um you know i was thinking about this process of uh when do we get to the point where they can start filtering it could be useful to have a list of how many results they get so maybe mm -hmm. it, if they click on one of one particular issue um or one particular thing maybe they've already narrowed it down to to 10 people or something like that and they're like show me the results and, and but maybe if it says 500 then they want to be more, you know, drill down a little bit or put in some more information. Um, so I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. That's an interesting point. It, it actually could be possible um, when we rebuild this thing to do that automatically. So if you imagine it was kind of stepping them through selections, mm -hmm. which it was a, um, you know, the list was producing in size, we can potentially just skip further questions. Mm -hmm. It gets to a particular point. Um, yes, and I know, you know, I don't know a ton about React, but I know that uh, it shouldn't be too hard to um, do something where it's um, updating, you know, mm -hmm. as you're as you're working. Um, I don't like this color, but it might be a, a just. I'm just putting in a color to indicate that, like. This this might be something that it, having it in a different color would be a way for it to uh, for it to stand out, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe we want to have in kind of our filtering area maybe we don't need to necessarily have a line but something that kind of indicates that this is our filter area and then if they have the in-person check then maybe it um, shows some information about location um, you know, since we're assuming we can do a lot of interactivity here, um, let's um, let's show this so that uh, we can indicate that maybe this is right out if they haven't, um, um, you know, if they don't select this, but this might have their 
uh, location, um, something like that. Um, do whatever the other filter is. Is this, uh, give me your thoughts so far. Yeah, I think you're, um, it's definitely tracking where I was kind of envisaging. It's hard, you know, you, you, you being the, the UI person you are, you can visualize it uh, or represent it. I, I kind of know, but I don't know how mm -hmm. to actually. <laughs> but this is, mm -hmm. this is matching up with what my thoughts were, I guess. Okay, great, great. Um, okay, so we can, we can go through the next phase of refinement because obviously it's not really going to look anything like this, but we've at least identified what things are most important, what things are most uh, prominent, and you know, having an understanding of the, the priority and also what things you cannot include is a really good start when you're doing UI design, like what things really need to be there and at yep. what level of, of importance. Um, so that's a really good starting point because we, we've already, you know, I think we're already way ahead of, uh, you know, a workflow like this. And these almost feel like ads or something like this over here. I, I, mm. I understand what they're doing here, but um, the, I don't know this, yeah, we could, I think we can do better than this. 